next up, Liberty is in Gippsland, Victoria. It is a stunning day here in Gippsland. And I'm here to see this unique and interesting home made purely of shipping containers. I'm so interested to see how they've pulled this one off. Let's go. Georgia and Luke, this house is so incredibly unique. It is unlike anything I've seen before. We're currently sitting in a shipping container. Tell me why a shipping container for your home. So I guess the idea came from wanting to build something that was affordable and eco-friendly. So we wanted to use as many recycled materials or salvage materials as we could. Because this feels so warm and homely, this space. I think of a shipping container and I'm like sparse and a bit yeah. cold, but you walk in here and it's the most lovely feeling. Is that what you wanted for the home? Yeah, absolutely. And that was, I guess, what we saw as the biggest challenge. The main, I guess, hesitations in working with shipping containers was around the thermal properties of it. Mm -hmm. In that you're working, you're gonna live in a tin box, essentially. Um, so heating and cooling was a really big consideration. And so spray foam insulation, all the research we did led us down that path and that made the most sense. It also helps with preventing the condensation. Um, and when we were putting that in, I mean, the day that we, were, we got the spray foam done, it was an immediate effect. It was just all of a sudden, it wasn't this hot box, it was just, a, a livable space, which was great. Tell us about the floor plan of this space, because you live in this part of it, and then you've got the Airbnb. Yeah, when we decided to relocate out to here, um, one of the big factors for us was when my parents come over. Mm -hmm. So I'm originally from the UK. Having them come over, we wanted to make sure they had their own space, um, and that we had our own space, because although we didn't have Leo at the time, he was well and truly on the cards. So his room, which was where they were staying, was gonna be occupied. And I don't think mum and dad wanted to sleep on the sofa bed. So we needed to extend, but we wanted to do it in a way that was gonna make sense to us. And having that there and available to us, but separate access means that we can put it on, up as an Airbnb as well, which is awesome. Using Australian timber was mm -hmm. something that we always wanted to do. When we built the house at George's dad's block of land, there was a old, I think it was a stallion paddock, I think, yeah, an old horse paddock. paddock. Yeah. So the fence rails that were around the horse paddock were old Australian hardwood. So we took all of those down um, and we ran them all through a thicknesser, which does the opposite of what it says, um, and actually thins the boards down, straightens them. I reckon the floors are yeah. one of my favorite things. It brings character to the home. Yeah, they've it. certainly got a lot of character, and I feel like that's probably the main thing in this part of the house that adds the warmth. It was certainly a big decision as to where we wanted to live yeah. and for us it was more around the lifestyle that we wanted. So we wanted enough space um, for you know kids to run around, we wanted to have chickens, we, we have a dog, um, we wanted to grow a lot of our own food, there's lots of fruit trees and things outside um, and that was really important to us. So uh, living in Currumburra it gave us that, that space with a bit of affordability on a big slope because we live in the hills um, and that's kind of the beauty of it I guess. What are some other features of the home that are sustainable? Like the plan is that the house sort of looks after itself really, water wise, electricity wise, so that if we want to go overseas, which we'd love to go to South America for a few months one day, we can just lock the door, walk away. Power and water is sort of looked after. One of the things I love about this home is how sustainable it is. They've really put together a home with a really low carbon footprint that's absolutely incredible and also super inspiring. So they've gone for over 13 kilowatts of solar panels, plus also a 10 kilowatt inverter, which is one of my favourites being the Goodwood EHB hybrid inverter, along with around 13 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which is more than enough to power them, not only for today, but also into the future. Look, what makes a Goodwood EHB inverter so special? It's brand new. I have one on my own home. It's a single phase inverter. It's also hybrid, which means you can connect it to battery storage. Now, it pairs really well with Goodwood's Lynx batteries, which come in 3.2 kilowatt hour modules. With these particular modules, they can just be stacked up like a Lego set. So you really start with about 6.4 kilowatt hours, and then you can build on top of it. So solar panels are basically being converted from DC to AC electricity, running through the inverter and powering the home. But alongside that, they're also charging up the batteries. 
So those batteries can be charged concurrently with supplying the home with this electricity. When it gets to night time, those batteries then come into use and are powering the home throughout the evenings and early mornings. We also wanted it to be sustainable as we grow as well. So if eventually we end up with electric cars or, um, you know, if we're living in the, the Airbnb one day and we build it all in and end up with more people in our house, then it can we won't have to sort of build out the solar system at that point. It's just sort of set up and, and good to go. Well, you have done a wonderful job with this house. It's certainly a first for me. So thank you so much for having us here today and showing us through. Oh, thanks thank for you. coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you.